I just want to say a few words of what's on my mind uh, with all that's been going on in Israel, Palestine, uh, the last almost two weeks now. You know, I, you know, the thing it strikes me is that U.S. imperialism hasn't skipped a beat from Trump to Biden. You know, it was Trump that moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to East Jerusalem or to Jerusalem. And uh, Biden has affirmed that decision. And then when this conflict broke out, Biden wouldn't publicly speak out against what the Israelis were doing to the Palestinians, not just in Gaza, but the evictions in East Jerusalem and the attack on uh, Muslims going to the Al-Aqsa uh, Mosque, which is the third most holy mosque in Islam. And, uh, you know, basically said, you know, Israel right or wrong, that's the U.S. policy. And we do hear it's more dissent than we have in the past from, you know, progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Not that many people, but some prominent people uh, didn't make any difference because politically they have no leverage. They have nowhere to go. You know, if they don't like what the Democrats are doing, what are they going to do? Support the Republicans? They're complicit in the smashing of the independent left. You know, ballot access and continuing this winner take all electoral system where the winner gets all the representation and everybody else gets nothing. So, uh, and it's not just Israel, Palestine, the Colombian protest movement against austerity and now police brutality and killings is entering its fourth week with new initiatives coming from the National Strike Committee. And then there's Haiti where the dictator won't step down and Biden's back in the dictator. So nothing's really changed. And, you know, I'm kind of irritated that when I hear Pramila J. Paul, chair of the Congressional, Black, uh, C Congressional Progressive Caucus, give Biden a grade of A, I wonder, well, with progressives like that, who needs neoliberal imperialists like Biden? <laughs>